EA Sports and the Corn Ferry Tour are proud to feature some of the best young talent in the world of golf. From the home of the PGA Tour, we're at TPC Sawgrass for live second round coverage of the Florida Open. Things starting to slowly take shape here on this Friday. For some, it is a race for the top prize. For others, it's a fight to stick around for the weekend as we show you the leaderboard. Our leader on this Friday is our featured golfer. She's on top by just one stroke as she gets ready to tee off. That one looking good. It's in the fairway here to start round two. Second shot straight ahead, and we go to Iona Steven. 136 is the number, and the pin right at the back. And that ball looked very good in the air. Just doesn't quite finish up that near to the flag, but still on the green. Well done, that is in for a par here at the first. And this will stay a one-shot lead. 532 yard par five second here at TPC Sawgrass. Not long as par fives go, but there is trouble. And that is classic Pete Dye. Still, if you play this the right way, you can get out of here with an Eagle three. Oh dear, that, that ball is going to be beyond the white stakes and that will be considered out of bounds.
11 feet away. No. Okay, not taking advantage of that par five. It's in for a double bogey seven. And she's gonna fall out of the top spot and wind up one shot back. Next up, the 177 yard par three third, the easiest par three at TPC Sawgrass. Two tiered green sloping from back to front. And it is protected by a bunker in front. Grass bunkers to the right. Birdie, definitely in the cards here if you hit a good shot off the tee. And that one not on the green, but not in a terrible spot either. Sitting up in the short grass. <laughs> Lovely pitch shot. Just nipped that ball off the turf. Just flew through the air beautifully. Sat down fairly quick as well. Good shot. So that safely in. It's a par here at the third. And she'll remain two shots off the pace. This is really a fun hole here at TPC Sawgrass. A lot of excitement, a lot of action. A short par for the fourth is only 384 yards. The trouble here on that second shot, you can see the water in front. If you're not accurate, you misjudge the distance, you can pay a stiff price. Decent break. It finished in the first cut. Another bounce or two. Might have been in the thicker stop. And that one barely makes the front of the green. Do you realize if you just miss hit the middle of the club, by a quarter of an inch, you lose 10%. That's right, 10%. That's a nice putt. Getting it there up the hill was half the battle. This got there just a little wide of the mark. Okay, that one finished off. It's a par here at four. And she's going to hold on at five under. Well, all the pros will tell you the fifth here at TPC Sawgrass is all you want. Challenging at 471 yards. It's the longest par four on the golf course. We've already seen some narrow landing areas on these first few holes. Number five, no different, and that is really a good tee shot there. 
This is where club selection is so important. Second shot into that stiff breeze. Well, I own has had a good look. Now this for birdie. Yeah, it's a long putt, so pace is important, but there's not a whole lot to it. I fancy the chances of getting this close. Yep, not bad. I had to put a little extra into that one, but got it there. That's a pretty good effort. That one finished off. It is a part here at five. And her score is going to stay right where it is. On now to the sixth, the hole that Pete Dye called the most beautiful hole at TPC Sawgrass. It's a par four at 393 yards. The water is self-evident left, framed by a long bunker that shapes the left side of the fairway. Up near the green, precision's important as there are no fewer than seven bunkers of various sizes waiting to swallow up errant approach shots. Yeah, all about hitting the fairway here, and that is right where you want to be. Wasn't right down the middle, but it wasn't bad at all. Coming at this second shot from the right side of the fairway. That's a bit of a head turner, really. That was a green light situation from that distance and well, far from the best shot I've seen today. Just five feet left. Nicely read there. It is a par here at the sixth. And her score is going to stay right where it is. Frank's seventh hole here at TPC Sawgrass. How do you break this one down? Not overly long, 440 yards, but uh, once again, it's a tee shot. If you're driving the ball well, that's fine. You just sort of blister it down there, but you're starting to lose one a little bit to the right. There's three pot bunkers there, and of course, if you're fearful of it going left, there's a canal all the way down the left side that'll get your attention. Cool looking shot. Walking the course today, let's bring in Nota Begay the third. She's got 155 yards to the hole, pin sitting on the left half of the green. That's into the tiny bunker here, left of the green. Yeah, an awkward little bunker shot. Just splash it out, let the ball run towards the flag. Oh, the hands came through beautifully there. Good thump of the sand and a good chance to save par. 
That one finished off. It'll be a par here at seven. And her score is going to stay right where it is. Here we are at the eighth at Pete Dye's famed stadium course at the TPC Sawgrass. Rich Lerner alongside Frank Novello. Frank, this is a hole that I really like. And uh, players do too, Rich, especially off that back tee where it must be about 80 yards of shoot that you go through before the uh, hole actually starts to aid, uh, open up. And um, this green, 11 bunkers in total around the whole putting surface. Now from the bunker. Yeah, just a little splash out on this par three. Okay, not bad out of the sand, and that's what will remain trying to grind out a par. Nope, didn't see the break, and that slides by to the left. That one finished off. It's a bogey here at number eight, and she'll fall to four under par. Frank, what do you make of the final hole here on the front side, the 583-yard par 5 ninth? just depends on how much you want to risk here. If you hit a good drive down the right side, it's certainly gettable for two but you can make an absolute mess here at nine. All right, in the fairway. That second shot got all the way down by the green, but in the bunker. So we'll have to see what the explosion shot can do from here. Really need a birdie right now. Okay, a good out, and that's what will remain for birdie. Ten-foot putt left. Yep, that's nicely done. It's a birdie here at the ninth. And this will be a two over 38 on this front side. Similar to the first hole, the 10th is a relatively short par four, 424 yards, but it requires accuracy and some strategy. You have to put your ball in the right place, that dog leg left, you have trees on the right, and don't forget about that big bunker on the left-hand side.
Looking for a strong finishing kick here on this Friday to get set up for the weekend in that. Another good drive here. From the fairway, Noda, her second coming up. Left with 154 to the hole. Have to calculate the wind coming from right to left. Well, had a good look at the green, but couldn't cash it in. In the rough now, wondering what might have been. But those are the shots that turn with you'd like to be a leisurely stroll out on the golf course into a day of hard work. Yeah, what could have been a tap-in is now going to be a grind. Just going to sneak on by. Okay, that one in for a bogey here at 10. And that will not help the cause. Hole number 11, 558 yard, par five. Frank, players in attack mode here. Yeah, just try and blitz it down there. There are other bunkers on the left to consider, but really with that much fairway, this is a green light opportunity. Yeah, that's a nice swing, and the result is going to be a tee shot that is set up just fine. Has to be thrilled with that second shot here to the par five. Frank got everything out of that. Yeah, did well just to advance the ball so far down the fairway. And now a fairly straightforward third shot. This is a pretty good performance right here. Six under for the tournament. Frank, what's so much fun about TPC Sawgrass is the excitement that it generates for a fan and how many different holes there are. 12 is a good example. Yeah, 12 looks like it's fresh from Scotland. You can see why Pete Dye spent a lot of time over there. Um, tee shot looks straight away, but the second shot is blind. The, the shot you get in Scotland with a wedge where you just see the top of the flagstick and you've got to really guesstimate on the yardage that you have. But a good wedge shot and someone that can judge their distance, this is certainly a birdie hole. Looking for a strong finishing kick here on this Friday to get set up for the weekend in that. Another good drive here.
Well, that one didn't work out. It didn't look bad in the air. It hit the green, but didn't sit. Yeah, it was never going to stop. That one safely in. It's a par here at 12. And she's going to stay at six under par. Frank, so much focus on the back nine here at the stadium course of TPC Sawgrass on the 17th hole with the island green. I think 13 gets lost sometimes, but the pros know this is a really good hole. Oh, it can be disastrous too. That's, I think, what you're referring to, Rich. There's a big ridge in the middle of this green that bisects the top side with the bottom side on the left. So even when the flag's on the left, you don't have to go directly at it because that normally causes the problem with the uh, wooden bulkheads down the left side and obviously the water left of that. So something on the ridge can often run down towards the left. But we have seen the odd hole-in-one here over the years. Solid shot and sometimes solid throughout the round will win the day. A birdie opportunity here at 13. And this really is all about visualization. You've got to see the line in your head, pick out a spot, maybe a foot, foot and a half in front of you and aim for that. Oh, what a putt right there. The speed was spot on, but it's just a fraction offline, and that would have gone in. Okay, safely in for par here at 13. And her score is going to stay right where it is. All right, Frank, this one gets everybody's attention. The 14th, 481 yards, par four. Yeah, it's not just the length of this hole. Water down the left, mounds to the right. This is it. You've got to buckle up here. Tee it up. This has to be your best swing. Looking for a strong finishing kick here on this Friday to get set up for the weekend and that another good drive here. Frank, there's a lot to factor in on this approach at the 14th. You can favor right side of this green and sort of allow the, the contours of the green just to move that ball to the left. That's got to be disappointing. Good line in the fairway, and the approach winds up in the bunker. Yeah, just able to pop that one out of there, but that will only make it onto the fringe. unfair sometimes <laughs> that looked in the whole way safely in it's a bogey here at 14 and she'll drop back now to five under such a good stretch of holes coming off that difficult 14th now to the 470 yard par for 15th again demanding and this tee shot you have to be on your game as simple as that
Yeah, good swing and a good result as that is safely into the fairway. So this, Iona, her second from the fairway. Well, it's 128 yards left to the flag today. The pin up front in the right-hand corner of the green. Now, really nothing wrong with that approach shot. Just a little shy of where you'd like to finish up, but still, one good putt, maybe a birdie. Just going to wander a foot or so by. Okay, a solid par here at the 15th. And her score is going to stay right where it is. Now to the par 5, 16th, 523 yards. And the key here, besides the obvious, good drive, solid second shot, is to not look too far ahead. But that's easier said than done, because as you get to that second shot, you can plainly see what's ahead, and that is the famous par 317 and the water to the right. Looking for a strong finishing kick here on this Friday to get set up for the weekend and that another good drive here. Oh, that second shot just ran out of fairway, but still, nice little pitch shot and a good chance to make four at par five. A little too much Mother Earth on that one, and a little less ball. Lucky to make the putting service. Okay, didn't want to let that one get away. It is a par here at 16, and her score is going to stay right where it is. Frank, as a fan, it's so exciting because it's just so simple as well. Ball's in the air. You're wondering, where is it? Wet, dry, short, long, winner or loser? And it's no surprise that this hole was an accident. This one was designed by not Pete Dye, but his wife Alice Dye. But we have seen so many accidents right here.
nicely done there. Just about knocked that one stiff and a short birdie putt coming up. Strong. That's in for birdie here at 17. And she moves to six under par. People always talk about 17 being visually intimidating. Frank, what about 18? If there's a little bit of wind off the right, the tee shot is so much easier. But if that wind is coming off the, the water, not only do you see the water and the wooden bulkheads, you see all the rough and the trees on the right. And of course, then you start bringing five, six, seven, even eight into play. That's what makes this tee shot so hard. Looking for a strong finishing kick here on this Friday to get set up for the weekend. And that, another good drive here. And this Nota, her second from the fairway. 159 yards left to the hole. Wind is helping from behind, so you can take a little less club. Ball not quite going to make it onto the green. It'll wind up a foot or so off. So she will tap that in for her par at 18. So our featured golfer here, pretty solid through the first two days, safely through to the weekend and squarely in the conversation. That's right, Rich, get off to a good start tomorrow, throw a few birdies in early and uh, 